guys hello and welcome back i'm gonna be doing another get ready with me while i talk politics video um so let's go ahead and get started i guess i'm i feel like it's funny even when i'm like oh i have a day off like i'm not busy today it still feels like i'm busy and i guess i am because like like today i don't have to work but i have three hours worth of therapy and um I also have to do grad school work I started today's my first day my first official day of grad school I'm very excited but I have to do some work for that and I'm actually filming like a little intro video on who I am so I also wanted to get ready for that sake and I thought I would take you guys along for the journey but just with like what I'm doing with therapy right now and stuff like I'm just I'm very busy even on like off days so let's go ahead and get into it so all right um I'm just gonna be comfy today so I'm gonna put a hoodie on when I'm like I'm done with my, my stuff so I think the biggest piece of news that comes to mind and I've been contemplating over the last like 18 hours is the devastating fire in the Bronx that killed 19 people the most devastating fire I think in 30 years in New York City and of course it happened in a low income like section 8 housing building or I should say it's a privately owned building but the majority of the residents who live there um, use section 8 like vouchers um, and somebody had a space heater on that basically caught on fire and that was what caused um the actual fire to start and you know presumably it would be because the building wasn't providing adequate heat and the tenants had to supplement that with a space heater i don't know why else you would use a space heater so i'm sorry i'm just looking for my beauty blender and i can't find it for some reason did I accidentally throw it away? Oh, yeah, I think I accidentally threw it away. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, I guess I'm going to use my hands. So, basically, um, clearly, they were not providing adequate heat. And then, um, the tenants were saying that the fire alarms would go off so often that they would just ignore them. And that was what caused people to avoid fleeing and you know supposedly that's that hold on i'm gonna get i forgot i accidentally threw out my beauty blender i think so i'm gonna go and get my rose water spray because i forgot that with this particular foundation i need like wetness and the rose water that I had, I actually ran out of, so I have to get my backup. By the way, if you want to get decent rose water, go to Marshall's and find some on clearance for like a couple bucks. That's my tip. Because they can charge like twenty or twenty-five dollars for rose water at somewhere like Anthropology or some shit like that. So, um, and you know, I think it's no coincidence that this fire happened in a building filled with low-income working-class New Yorkers, you know, you would never see this kind of thing happen in luxury housing or high-rise buildings that house upper-income tenants, right? It's just not a coincidence that the biggest fire in 30 years happened in that kind of residential building. And, of course, the property owners are claiming no fault. There is an investigation, although... Apparently, one of the owners, because this this building is part of a firm that owns a lot of other affordable housing units, which I'm not sure how I feel about that, because I do support affordable housing, and I think we need more access to it, but it seems like it's probably just being held by this like private equity firm, and they're not actually managing the property appropriately. And one of those people is on Eric Adams, the new mayor's housing transition team. So, you know, it's probably going to be corruption at its finest, but we can only hope that the investigation is fair and adequate. And 
the the part about it that I found even the most egregious though, you know, negating the fact that people are literally losing their lives as collateral damage for venture capitalism is that the response from the mayor and basically the city and state government for disaster relief is setting up GoFundMe accounts for the victims and arranging donation sites. Like, this is their public policy response. Like, how are more people not outraged by that? This is, our government should not be relying on the goodwilled nature of private citizens for disaster relief. To me, that is a failing of government at the most fundamental levels. You have to have actual organizing happening. You have to have actual policy, like actual disaster relief efforts. You should have this kind of stuff in place already. You should not be relying on donations. And then I think just the nerve for our city and state government to ask us as citizens to tap into our pocketbooks to chip in for disaster relief um, when we're already being taxed at higher rates than the wealthiest people in the state. Um, when we already are you know, price gouged at every turn, are um, experiencing record high rent prices, are being asked to work and put our health at risk during a global pandemic, all of this and you know, our, our taxes aren't even enough. You want us to donate our resources towards disaster relief. You don't actually want to do any of that work yourself. Because if private citizens want to collectively organize, I think that's wonderful. But that should not be the government response. That should not be public policy. I just think it's... It, it's so lazy... And just representative of the lack of care that our leaders are putting into real issues, like actual loss of life. And it's not something that we can tolerate. So I was, I've been very, very upset about it. And I just think it's just not good enough. We can't accept that as business as usual because people literally lost their lives. Like, not only should they be taken care of and given the ability to, like, have a place to live, to have food on their table, clothes on their back, all of that, um, somebody needs to be held accountable. You know, as far as I'm concerned... When people are dying, there has to be urgency to understand how that happened and to hold the appropriate parties responsible. Because it, it's, to me, if, if it was from a lack of um, building maintenance, from keeping things, um, you know, up to code the way they should be, to me, that makes the owners criminally liable for people dying. Like, you know, it's a serious matter, and I think it needs to be taken as seriously as it is. And I'm just not convinced that they're going to. I feel like they're going to do, you know, an open and shut case, and then people are just going to move on. And no one's ever going to be held accountable and justice is not going to prevail. Okay, so this is my makeup minus, I need to go get my lip gloss. <laughs> um, my finger's also blue. So I'm gonna be right back again. All right, I'm back. Got buxom on my lips and I just took my hair down from my ponytail, which is why it's kind of to the side like that because that's what happens when you wear a side pony for a day plus 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and comb through my hair and um, I'm gonna actually try this curl defining gel it, this is a little sample that I have from Alafia is that you say this brand so there's a lot in here um I was mostly upset about that yesterday and then what else is happening I don't know I mean it'll be interesting to see what happens with the senate filibuster it's a little to be determined I know they said that they're gonna consider a rules change and and do all of that stuff by Martin Luther King Day which is a week from today so you know it should be happening fairly soon if we're taking Chuck Schumer and his word which I don't know if we should but that's all we have to go on right now and um you know Omicron just continues to ravage the country um it seems like we're getting close to the peak in New York but um, it's probably going to be like another month before things really calm down. And, you know, things always start first in New York and then they go um, spread through the country. And so probably the country hasn't seen the peak yet, which I think is a scary thought. Like literally at my workplace, which I'm not going to say where I work, you know, for all of the reasons. Um... I work in retail though right now and so we have there's sort of like a protocol for if somebody tests positive of course you know are they protecting us as much as they could be absolutely not have they um it instated some kind of testing program of course not um you know do they pay us to go and get tested no do they reimburse us for home test kit costs of course not like you know it's it's not great um it's not great but um you do get disaster relief pay which i'm not sure if that's a company thing or if that's because we're in new york city and i think that's mandatory in new york city um so basically like if you do test positive or you're exposed at work um i think it's only if it's at work though uh you get basically you get you know paid for the time that you were supposed to work um I guess kind of like sick leave and yeah and basically and we also get notified every time somebody tests positive um and then like the people who are I guess working with them also are told to quarantine um and like four people out of 20 total on our staff so 20 percent have tested positive um since I started working there which was a little less than two months ago which is, isn't that wild when you think about it? 20% in less than two months have contracted uh, COVID. And, you know, but there's nothing you can really do. Like, doing the job means you have to put yourself at risk. So, it's just the nature of detail. Oh, it is a retail job. <laughs> I think I might have said that. But, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I did. So, it just, you know... I find it unbelievable, though, that we're supposed to just kind of, like, let it roll off our backs, not be concerned. Of course, they can't tell us, like, who tests positive because of, like, HIPAA compliancy. But, you know, I have definitely been concerned throughout the past month, month and a half about getting COVID. Um, but not much you can do. So, all right. I guess we're done. We're done getting ready. Here's the final look. <laughs> um, thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you later.